Welcome back, folks. Sport Federation TV. We, of course, carry on talking about sport in the Western Cape and the various federations. And it's great to have you along and uh, joining me on the line. And we haven't uh, uh, had uh, Debbie with us for a long time, but we're, we're absolutely thrilled, is the uh, chairperson of the High Performance Commission in South Africa, uh, Debbie Alexander, or Dr. Debbie Alexander. And we've got her on the line with us now. And, and uh, we've, of course, got to make sure we have all the titles right to make sure that we understand who we're talking to. Debbie, it's great to have you on the show. How are things on your side? JP, and it's wonderful to, to be sharing this uh, time with you, albeit very short. Yes, it's un unfortunately, that is the nature of television. We, ha we are limited on the clock. But let's just start at the beginning because we, you've got such a string of titles behind your name. And, and I'm probably going to have to try and elaborate on that a little bit myself because I know that you probably won't want to promote yourself. But let's start uh, with the most simple thing. You are the chairperson of the High Performance Commission at SASCOC. Can you, in, in short, tell me, for the benefit of the viewers there, what is a High Performance Commission? So the High Performance Commission are in place to look at, look at every aspect of high performance from the medical, psychology, uh, sports science perspective, also anti-doping, nutrition, uh, health and wellness, and many other aspects. But the, the, really the, the task of the High Performance Commission is to, first of all, identify athletes with the potential to compete at the Games, uh, keeping in mind that we're, uh, we're the... Um, the organization responsible for Olympic and Paralympic sports. So we're looking for the best of the best. We have an operation uh, excellence program. Well, it's not running at the moment uh, uh, simply because of the funding, but we've still identified those athletes. And, and our role is to ensure team preparation and team planning uh, for major games and also to take care of athlete health and well-being. So when we see the Olympics every four years, which we know is now not in this year, when we see the, 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 the South African team representing there at the Olympics and flying the flag, uh, you guys are the team behind the team, so to speak. You've made sure that over a four-year period they've managed to get to the Olympics. Well, yes and no, because it's not just the High Performance Commission. It's also the national federation. So we must keep in mind that athletes come up through their provincial structures uh, to the national structures. The national structures then, um, they develop them to the, uh, to the point of where they're competing on an international level. And then that's where we come in. So for example, in the planning towards Tokyo, we've had to think about all the challenges that we could face in Tokyo and then prepare ourselves um, to, to have a package together for the athletes and the coaches so that they would know how to deal with uh, conditions in Tokyo. And oh, Tokyo right. specifically, as you know, was weather and uh, the temperatures, the water, etc. All sorts of different dynamics when it comes to the world of sport. We, uh, so that's why we have a high-performance commission, so that you guys can, can help with all of these dynamics to get our athletes to, to do as well as they possibly can. Debbie, you're a clinical psychologist. We know that you're going to be involved with the Western Cape uh, Provincial Sport Confederations Women and Girls Commission, um, and uh, they've in, enlisted you to, to do a workshop for them on psychology, on sports psychology. How, why is sports psychology in sport, before we get to the women's side of things, why is sports psychology in sport so important? Um, it's important from many aspects. So mostly when people think of sports psychology, you know, they think of setting goals and planning and preparation and managing stress, but it's, it's actually broader than that. Um, you know, for, for me, I see that as, as one aspect. But there's another aspect, and that's, that's the important aspect there is, is relationships. The relationship between the athlete, the coach, the athlete, the organization, the athlete, and the parents. And it's a, it's a complete system. And often where it falls short is in the, the communication and the understanding uh, amongst each other and uh, aspects relating to trust and then building on that relationship. Uh, that, for me, is really, really key. Um, other than all the other mental preparation that most people focus on. So from a, from a layman's perspective, um, it's not enough anymore just to go to the gym and 
train every day physically. You've actually got to think about the mental component for competition. And that mental comp component has got what you're showing me is so many different dimensions. Yes. And, you know, it's very interesting uh, because athletes train their bodies, but they never train their brains. Yeah, they yeah. never train their minds. And the difference between that athlete winning a gold medal and the one that uh, comes further down the behind. Top, it's mental. Yes. It's mental. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's not just about training, doing the mental prep. It's about understanding what gets in the way of yes. being able to do that mental prep. And that's where the, you know, the work of a clinical psychologist or counseling psychologist working with someone in sport can make a huge difference uh, for the athlete. Debbie, let's move our attention now to the Western Cape Women and Girls Commission. They've asked you to come and talk to, to our women about high performance and, and sports psychology. Um, what would you be looking at there if we, if we talk about something that is maybe slightly more focused towards supporting women? You know, um, actually, they've, they've asked me to, to just speak a little bit about preparing oneself mentally um, for, um, in, in this particular instance, around sponsorship. And I, I thought about that because um, the focus was on the day. What do you do on the day? But for me, <clears throat> it's about not working on oneself or preparing for a day. It's how we are every day, every day. Right. And it's not just the physical component. It's the mental emo component. It's the emotional component. It's how we come across. It's how we present ourselves and how we relate to ourselves and others and the world around us. That is what's important. Will you be so, looking at, 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 at our, our women uh, who you're speaking to dealing with maybe uh, some greater challenges that they have out there than yes. most support structures yes. might offer? Not might often, they do. They do mostly. <laughs> have uh, challenges for women and I'm looking forward to that I've had some I've had an opportunity to work with women in Africa and for the uh, Paralympic movement and it was wonderful to be able to to witness their growth um, just when someone someone external can point things out and when it comes from another woman I think women do not invest sufficiently in other women yeah. and we have to do more of that so I'm really looking forward to working with the women of the Western Cape. I'm also going to be doing something with the women of the Gauteng uh, Sports Council. So um, very, all very exciting times. So thank you very much for this wonderful opportunity. Well, you're certainly in demand and, um, and, and you certainly have the track record that we know that our, uh, our Women and Girls Commission has got the right person um, um, speaking to them. Um, Debbie, I think we're going to leave it at that. And I think that the next time we talk to you will probably be a feedback session from that workshop, which, we, which we, we're hoping to find out. And of course, from the, the chairperson of the Women and Girls Commission uh, um, as well. Um, uh, Sunet Mare. So we're looking forward to that. So we'll we'll leave it at that, and we'll say to you on that side now: uh, stay safe, stay isolated, and and we look forward to your workshop. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thank you. There we go, folks. Uh, Dr. Debbie Alexander, clinical psychologist, head of high performance at Sascock. Um, she is ranked at the in, at the top of the pile, um, so it's great to speak to her, and we look forward to getting feedback on that session of how things went there at the Women and Girls Commission. Of course, uh, it is Women's Month, and that is where the focus is lying now. Not that it should not always be lying there.